Today, we have closed down the high road <laughs> and we are going to take a little tour on the post-debate MAGA meltdown. It is insatiably delicious. Delicious. Get ready to inject the MAGA tears into your veins. But I want to first play a clip to you from dipshit Sean Hannity from the Dipshit News Network, and this is his pre-debate prediction. Play the clip. Do I think that she will be able to rattle him in any way? No, I, I would argue right now the chance is 0.001%. Do I think he will be respectful? I do. Nailed it. Nailed it. Always gets it right over there on the Dipshit Network. How on earth can he say this stuff with a straight face? The Harris campaign has been saying for weeks, our intention is to poke the bear. Our intention is to get under his skin. All she had to do was mention his rallies <laughs> and how un unhinged they are and people getting bored and leaving. And then he goes bananas and starts lying about all these pets getting eaten <laughs> by immigrants. I mean, it just a complete crash and burn. But it doesn't stop there. After the debate, I believe this guy's name is Greg Gutfield, Greg Gut Dick. I don't know. <laughs> Kylie, play the clip. Congratulating Kamala for the debate is stolen valor. You should be congratulating David Muir and Lindsey Davis, who did the heavy lifting. And so calling that a debate is disinformation. That's like me going into a bar with Tyrus and inciting a brawl and then later taking credit for all the broken jaws. <laughs> Here's how you know that she won so resoundingly, because now they're starting what happens when I take my son to his basketball games and your team loses, you start blaming the refs, right? It's three on one. Let's congratulate the moderators. Listen up dipshit news. This man stood on the debate stage. And once you remove him from the MAGA bubble and put him in the real world, you're unable to sane wash him anymore. We all saw his crazy. We saw him talk about uh, the made up story that all these cats and dogs are getting eaten. You know, it's like, hide your cats, hide your dogs. The immigrants are coming for him. That's a complete lie. He started lying about uh, these post-birth abortions, which everybody knows is a complete lie. I watched the debate with my son. He was like, is he saying that doctors and nurses kill babies after they're born? I said, that's exactly what he's mm -hmm. saying. He immediately knew that that wasn't true. So when you remove Trump from the MAGA bubble and put him into mainstream normal people America, they're unable to sane wash it. So what they do is they start blaming the ref. Always blaming the ref means you're losing, full stop. And what I found interesting about all the complaints about the moderators, like you said, on the most atrocious and vile lies, they checked him. I've read different reports, 33 lies he told during the debate or 40, depending on what you say. They checked him three times, three, that's it. And they were the most obvious, ridiculous lies. So for them to cry around about being fact-checked, like if you don't want to be fact-checked, don't fucking lie. It's that easy. It is just a full-blown titty baby parade over in right-wing media. They are incapable of taking personal accountability for anything. And we're old enough to remember when the Republican Party stood for, we're the party of personal accountability. Now you've got a man who lost the presidential campaign in 2020 and caused a big insurrection and then packed up his toys and left before the peaceful transfer of power. He couldn't even go to the inauguration. He's such a titty baby. And then you have him completely lying about every single misstep that he has. He says stuff about veterans. And he blames the person that overheard it. There's always an excuse for all of the bad stuff that he does. Now he has an entire network of dipshits that enable him. And it's unbelievable that these buffoons have an audience. And it just always brings me back, who are these people that are so confused, lack critical thinking? It's literally like they are told their whole life, this is how you must believe. And then they go to this news organization. These are our talking points, and we're going to stick to this. Does it ever occur to them to think for themselves and think, 
wait a minute. If a baby was killed at a hospital after it was born, that would be on the news, and the doctors and nurses would be charged with first-degree murder. That's never happened. It's never happened not one time. But you have millions of Americans that go along with this. But here's the deal. Their ideas are so radical, and they have to go to the most extreme to keep people engaged. And there is just a massive problem with education in this country. And this is the same party that wants to defund the Department of Education. And I wonder why. I wonder why they want to defund education so they can keep everybody watching dipshit news with dipshit Hannity and gut dick and all these <laughs> others. All right. Let me play you the next clip. Here we have Kaylee Ann Macca. Wah, wah, <laughs> wahny, um, losing her mind over Donald Trump continuously lying and making a complete ass of himself on national television to the tune of 68 million viewers. David Muir, not a journalist. Rachel Lindsay, not a journalist. You are left-wing activists. Trump was fighting three against one. Did he make every pivot perfectly? No. There are things he can learn. There are things he can do better next time. Kaylee Ann McEwaney, not a real journalist. Not a real journalist. And her credibility is zero or negative because she got up as the press sec secretary every day and lied and covered up for Donald Trump. I can't hear what she has to say because she is a proven, tried and true liar and apologist and an abler for that man. Here's my favorite component of Kaylee Ann McEnany is she always has on this uh, crucifix mm -hmm. made of diamonds. Like she's this good Christian woman, yet here she is day in, day out, covering for the most morally bankrupt con man, uh, grifter this country has ever seen. And she sits there and lies and lies and lies all day, every day. And here she is losing her mind because Donald Trump was corrected only three times. The most egregious ones, they tried to correct him. And they're all like, oh my gosh, somebody tried to make former President Trump accountable and they just can't handle it. And I have to tell you, it's delicious to me that they are melting down so badly right now that they have to view their leader through the same lens that the rest of the world does. And this is how they respond to it. Is there any moral clarity? God, you know, I mean, I think he's taking it too far. He's always blaming everybody else for his problems. He's making shit up. He's further marginalizing a group of immigrants in Ohio that do nothing but show up hard for work, have never eaten a cat or dog. No, they don't do any of that. But right now we're going to take a quick commercial break to hear from our sponsors of IHIP News. And after that, we are going to actually hear from a Trump sycophant that does eat animals. <laughs> Pumps, everybody is talking about those weight loss injections because the results are so dramatic. They work by lowering blood sugar and reducing appetite. But what if you need to lose weight, but you don't have the money and don't like the weekly shots? A friend of mine discovered this product called Lean, and the results are absolutely remarkable. The studied ingredients in Lean have been shown to lower your blood sugar, burn fat by converting it into energy, and curb your appetite and cravings so you're not as hungry. But listen up, listener. Lean is not for the casual dieter with only a few pounds to lose. The doctors at Brick House Nutrition created Lean for those frustrated dieters with 10 or more pounds to lose. My friend has tried this and had incredible results. So listener, let's get you started with 15% off and free rush shipping so you can add lean to your healthy diet and exercise plan. Visit takelean.com and enter news for your discount. That's promo code news at takelean.com. This episode is sponsored by Better Help. Pumps, I have so much anxiety running into this election, managing my job, managing being a mother, managing our uh, travel schedule. Sometimes I feel I wake up in the middle of the night and there's just a hamster running in my head. I have so much gratitude for my therapist at BetterHelp because it's so convenient. 
I really like BetterHelp because I can do it from home where I don't have any inhibitions and I can be completely comfortable. That really is the game changer. You can do it right from your house and you don't lose time in your day driving to the therapist's office, sitting in the awkward rate waiting room, and then going into the therapist's office and then the stress of driving out. Listener, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash IHIP today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IHIP. You didn't hear in any of the dipshit news clips that I just played for you them address the fact that Donald Trump lied from the start of the debate to the end and that he repeats really unhinged far right conspiracy theories from the bowels of the worst part of the Internet. And there is a person intimately affiliated with his campaign that um, found a bear on the side of the road and thought, I'm going to chop up this bear and store its meat in my freezer so I can eat it later, roadkill. And then he had it in his car for too long. So he thought, I'm going to, I don't have time to cut the bear up. So I'm going to stage a crime scene that it was hit over by a bicycle in Central Park. This man's daughter also claimed that he cut off the head of a whale on a beach, um, that he's uh, done weird shit with dogs and on and on. So let's take a listen to um, loyal Trump supporter RFK Jr.'s take on Donald Trump's face plant in uh, Tuesday night's debate. Uh, uh, Vice President Harris clearly won the debate in terms of her delivery, her polish, uh, her organization and, and her preparation. I think on substance, uh, uh, President Trump wins in terms of his his governance. On substance, he thinks President Trump won the debate. Are you kidding me? Here's the deal. He had four years in the White House. It was an absolute disaster from soup to nuts. It is unbelievable that somebody could get on the TV and talk about how great he is on substantive issues because he has been bitching about the Affordable Care Act for nine years. Still has no policy on it. Oh, he has a concept. Well, he has a concept of a policy. He has a concept. Just like we have a concept for our uh, resort we're going to open up in the Bahamas. Right. We have, con- we have a lot of concepts. It's, But see, that's the thing. The Democrats are held to this standard, to where you have to have policy, you have to bring your A game, you have to be sound, you have to be reasonable, you have to be rational, you have to be honest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Trump just rolls up, has zero plan for anything, starts lying through his teeth. You know, when you think about how insane it is that they didn't even have time to question him about all the grifting he's doing. Right. (laughs) I would love to see that. You know, like, why, why are you selling Bibles with your name on it to supporters. And then are people really getting these shoes? And what about these photoshopped NFT cards of yourself that your poor followers buy and they're expecting to get a physical card in the mail and then they don't get it? I mean, it's just, he is a total evangelical preacher with no morals, no backbone, and he's not even sane. No. Running for the highest office in the land, if not the world. And You have a news organization that is just breathtakingly obsequious to every stupid thing you say, and they cover for you. You don't hear them saying, boy, he really stepped in it today. You have Sean Hannity, who knows better. Absolutely. We know he knows better. Who says, oh, he's not going to take the bait. Before the debate started, my 18-year-old son said to me, oh, she's going to be able to poke him so easily. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew it. She telegraphed it. Right. She warned. But here's why he's so easy to manipulate for foreign leaders. So his advisors, Russian agent Tulsi Gabbard, advises Russian agent Donald Trump and says, here's the deal. 
they're going to try to poke you. Oh, they'll never be able to poke me. Oh, no, no, she's no. And he believes it in that moment. But this is a person who never plays the tape through on anything. This is a person who's bored to tears in his policy meetings. This is a person who wants to be on Twitter all the time, but he's gotten darker. The only thing that's changed about Trump is as dark as he was at that um, inauguration speech, it's gotten darker, angrier, meaner, more vindictive. And um, you have some of his supporters that are saying, like podcasters, that have said, we think the ABC journalists should be criminally charged with election fraud. And that might sound hyperbolic, but Trump for a long time has said the fake news, when I'm back in power, we're going to do something with the fake news. And so, of course, Fox is not going to hold him accountable to this. But here's what I have to say. At some point, nobody is safe with this man. He has zero, zero loyalty. But I saved the cherry on top for the stage five meltdown of Megyn Kelly. <laughs> and it is so delicious. Get ready to inject this meltdown into your veins, listener, because she is just lost her mind, recorded it and posted it on the internet. So this woman is fine with his plan to take custody of the children from parents who don't want them to chop off their body parts and put them in Minnesota court's custody so the body parts can be chopped off and they can be sterilized outside the custody of their parents. That's what led Taylor Swift to endorse him. Can I tell you something? I criticized her about six months ago when she came out strongly in favor of, she went to, or she, she went to a fundraiser to raise money for Hamas supposedly Palestinians, but the group that was doing the fundraising has was known to funnel the money to Hamas. And I said, people should boycott her. It was an offhanded comment. People went nuts. Some lunatic dropped a note in my personal mailbox outside my house begging me not to boycott Taylor Swift as though I have that power. I'm allowed to criticize Taylor Swift and I don't give a who gets upset. This is disgusting. If she wants to vote Harris Walsh, she can do it all she wants. But to say the reason she's doing it is because of Tim Walls' stance on LGBTQ. LGBTQ, F you, Taylor Swift, and F all of the people who want to see these children have body parts chopped off and watch them sterilized under the age of consent, and then will ride off to their multi-gazillion dollar mansions, never to think of them again. Emily, this is unbelievable. The left is losing its mind. She signed it, Taylor Swift, childless cat lady. Again, this is what psychiatrists refer to as the flight of ideas. She's all over the board. This is a woman who's been, Megyn Kelly, successful. I mean, I don't agree with her on anything politically, but she's had a very successful career. She's been ambitious. She's a career woman. Um, Who is that triggered by Taylor Swift, who has her own agency, an autonomous American citizen of the United States, a job creator Absolutely. out the wazoo, an economic boom all in of herself. And she endorses Kamala Harris for obvious reasons. Obvious. I mean, it's obvious. We don't have to state all of the reasons why, because any woman who wants to have autonomy over her own body, who supports the LGBTQ plus community, who wants to lift up minorities and who can recognize a uh, unhinged autocrat when they see it is going to support Kamala Harris. She has this meltdown where she starts talking about kids' body parts getting chopped off. And this is, this is, again, this is all in this right wing media echo chamber. It's about these imaginary litter boxes that kids are allegedly taking shits in, in the school classroom, which doesn't happen. Uh, these post-birth executions, which is a complete lie, which doesn't happen. Um, and now we've got, I guess, school counselors are whacking off wieners, it, which is a complete lie, which doesn't happen. But what you have here are people that are picking on the most marginalized yes. people of our society. You have Haitian immigrants in Ohio that want to get up work, make a livable wage, go home and live safely. You have Donald Trump attacking them as he's always attacked immigrants. You have Megyn Kelly attacking the trans community. And that is a very private, personal situation between the child and the parents. It's not the government's business how that is dealt with. What you have now is the 
big government MAGA movement. I've never seen a request to expand government intervention in the rights and lives of its citizens than I have this MAGA movement. And it is terrifying. And we already see what it looks like because it's happening here in Oklahoma. And you have all of these people that think that they are so morally superior that lean onto these stupid lunatic fringe lies. And she or here she is having a stage five meltdown and posted that on the internet like she's rational. What's interesting to me about it is nobody on planet Earth believes that people at school are having body parts removed. And you want to know how I know that without having ever been to one of these schools? Because surgeries are expensive and Republicans don't want to pay <laughs> for right. other people's medical bills. So shut the fuck up, Megan <laughs> Kelly. We all know that's not happening. Number right. one, it's outrageous. And number two, they're too fucking stingy and selfish to pay for it. So shut up. I agree. All right. So I want to leave you with a little jam, a little hit that's going viral. And I found this on Twitter last night. And so please like and subscribe and we will see you here tomorrow. But I'm going to leave you with a great little banger for us all to dance to on our way out. Eat the cat. Eat, eat the cat. Eat the They're cat. eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. Eat the cat. Eat, eat the cat. Eat the cat. Eat the cat. Eat the cat. Eat the cat.